fabric of St. Bernard Parish is different. Changed forever since Hurricane Katrina crashed ashore. The grace of God, he was with us. And, it, it, and I tell you what, I'm not a big church goer, but after this is over and we have a church to go to, I'll be there. The courage to survive and to rebuild. If we can keep that in some part of our, our consciousness, uh, then Katrina really didn't win because it really united us in a way that not many other things can. How the parish rose from the abyss to become a better place for those who came home. This is a special presentation of WDSU, Hurricane Katrina, 10 years forward, St. Bernard Parish. 10 years ago, life changed for the people of Southeast Louisiana, and St. Bernard Parish saw some of the most severe devastation from Hurricane Katrina. It was here where some of the first effects from the storm were felt a decade ago. Good evening, I'm Scott Walker. And I'm Mark Rador. Almost all of St. Bernard's 68,000 residents were left homeless. 163 people were killed. But there are stories of survival that put the human spirit to the ultimate test. WDSU reporter Heath Allen was in St. Bernard when Katrina crashed ashore, and he begins our look at St. Bernard Parish 10 years forward with some of the key figures in the parish taking a look back. It's really hard to believe. August the 29th, 10 years ago, the flood waters from Katrina here all the way up to those windows on the second floor here at the governmental complex. That was St. Bernard 10 years ago. What about St. Bernard now? Some people are going to shed a many a tears. I've already had grown men cry. Katrina's wrath laid waste to St. Bernard Parish, a place that had for many been home for generations. Every neighborhood here, no exceptions, underwater, as much as 20 feet in some places. More than 200 lives were lost here, a way of life enjoyed for so long, gone in a matter of hours. WDSU photographer Tom Fitzgerald captured not only the imagery of a mammoth and historic storm, but the courage and fortitude of a group of people determined to rise from the death and destruction Katrina had left in her wake. Less than 24 hours after the storm. You can't wrap your brain around this. You can't unless you're in it. I took my first boat ride last night. I've never seen so much devastation. I've been a medic for 24 years. The grace of God, he was with us. And, it, it, and I'll tell you what, I'm not a big church goer. But after this is over and we have a church to go to, I'll be there. While much of the national attention focused on New Orleans and the Mississippi Gulf Coast, each facing their own epic struggle, St. Bernard Parish was all but forgotten in those first few days post-Katrina. Largely out of the sight of the world, a massive search and rescue effort unfolded. As the winds died away, the sheriff and fire departments salvaged what they could, then commandeered what they needed and began saving lives. Other parish personnel joined an armada of neighbors, moving quickly to find survivors. Isolated, cut off, St. Bernard came to its own rescue. Just out of the hospital following major surgery, parish president Junior Rodriguez and the council actually governed from the roof of the parish building, home those first few days after the storm. Eventually, the entire parish government, what was left of it, packed up and moved to the Exxon Mobil refinery by boat. Thank God, I'm a pack rat. Worldly possessions in a box. That's it. Yeah. That's it. So what happens now? I mean, we what? rebuild. Florida can do it every year. Why can't we do it? It'll be bigger and better. Works for me. It defied description, as if the scene weren't surreal enough all by itself. With precious little food or drinkable water, two huge ice trucks showed up at the Exxon Mobil refinery. Ice in the midst of stifling heat seemed like a godsend. They arrived about the same time as FEMA representatives, finally, and talk about surreal. They were literally going to take good ice, which, you know, at the time was worth more than pure gold to these people, and waste it and dump it and make that truck leave the disaster area, or at least this part of the disaster area. No one could believe they were being told to dump ice onto the ground just to free up the trucks. And it didn't happen. The rest of them, some bitches don't move. All right. 
we get that ice off and we get in the right place, then you move. I was told there are 37, I, w I was, well, I was told that there are 37 of these trucks in Baton Rouge. The trucks are staying here, okay? Why in the world would anybody throw ice on the ground in this situation under any circumstances? They shouldn't. The only people are telling them to are the FEMA idiots. A decade later, standing in virtually the same spot, Bitter remembers the confrontation like it was yesterday. I, I just told them, look, this ain't happening. You can think you have whatever authority you want. You can call your federal backups. It's going to take them about four and a half weeks to get through to here. So this isn't happening today or anytime soon. The two huge trucks were ultimately locked and put under guard. They did not move. The victory is much for the spirit as it was for the all important ice. Another spiritual lift just days out from the storm. Governor Kathleen Blanco landed at the refinery. For many, she was the first sign of real hope from the outside. There were tears. So worried about you. Oh, we know. So scared. We're still afraid. I know. And it just seems like it gets worse every day. It's going to start getting better. I was, I was crying. I was happy, of course. Um, wondering what she was going to do for us. And all she was telling us that was, it's coming. They're coming. And we said, when? The nightmare has never ended for my family. Ten years forward, Chief Tommy Stone still fiercely proud of the effort of his department, of his people, against the longest of odds. Even as they lost friends, neighbors, and family, St. Bernard's first responders went way above and far beyond the call of duty. And the chief went even further. I told the firefighters that, you know, you went out and you did all these rescues, you're not doing any body recovery, so that any time one of the morgue units couldn't find an address or couldn't find uh, where victims were, I would take them out and I would personally go bring them around to different places because I wasn't going to let the firefighters do that. As the days wore on and work continued, folks wanted to come home, if for nothing else than to see what they'd lost or what they could salvage from their pre-Katrina lives. First came the warning, and then the rude awakening. People just won't recognize the parish as they, as they left town. The, the parish is a shell of what it was. It really stripped you back to, as I said before, what are you really made of? What are you really made to do? Uh, who are you really made to be? Councilman Craig Teferro would become President Craig Teferro and navigate the parish through the storm and the oil spill and oversee much of St. Bernard's rebirth and rebuild, fueled by the spirit of the parish. If we can keep that in some part of our, our consciousness, uh, then Katrina really didn't win um, because it really united us in a way that not many other things can. In St. Bernard, everyone was in the same boat. Everybody lost everything. My own house sat next to the Murphy Oil Refinery and like so many others got hit with floodwaters and oil. And like so many others, it's gone now. Covering a storm is one thing, sharing it, riding it out with friends and neighbors, puts everything in a whole different light. Well, you were there. I remember when you were there filming. <laughs> I was up on the second floor. You was on the first floor, the door was on this side, the atrium on that side, and you were standing there, and the water got up to about three feet, and the door popped open, and sent him straight across. <laughs> Never miss a lake. From his home, sitting next to the newly constructed Great Wall of St. Bernard, Junior Rodriguez spends a thousand stories of the storm. Barely able to get around as Katrina came ashore, he stayed his post through both physical and emotional pain. People have no idea what it was like to be caught in that situation and stayed here. I mean, it was like you went back to the beginning of time. Could anybody have been prepared for what happened? Well, not fully, but we all could have been better prepared. And I think the good news is we all are far better prepared now, federal, state, and local.
The landscape of St. Bernard has changed, much of it for the better. Some things sadly may never return. Here, at the end of the world marina, Katrina truly was. Shell Beach and Hopedale, virtually wiped off the map, thrive again on the edge of the controversial and now closed Mississippi River Gulf outlet, the Mr. Go. Fishermen making a living from the same waters that tried to wash them away. It's time to celebrate. We've got a lot of good things going on. This, you know, we lost a lot, but we've gained an awful lot. Um, again, you were here, you know what it looked like. Uh, it's a remarkable difference now. Sitting silently just at the water's edge, St. Bernard's memorial to those lost in the storm. A constant reminder that as tragic as Katrina was, hope springs eternal. An unwavering spirit that says, the best is yet to come. Ten years later here in St. Bernard Parish, it's probably as safe as it's ever been. But nobody wants to see another hurricane like Katrina. Margaret? As for the Mr. Go, the now closed navigation channel largely blamed for the flooding, a judge ruled federal authorities are liable for some of that destruction. But the U.S. Justice Department has until October 9th to decide whether to appeal the judge's decision. Ten years forward, it is unclear how much money St. Bernard Parish or its residents might receive. Still to come, a big gamble by a small business. How one mom and pop restaurant became a rallying point for the entire community. I had to get this place going. You know, we had to, to, to help our community. When we continue our look at Hurricane Katrina, 10 years forward.